Hi, I'm Stephen Kaplan. I've been playing and teaching the oboe for decades, and over those years, I've heard oboe players talk, laugh, cry, and complain about all kinds of specialized issues related to performing on this beautiful and unusual instrument. They talk a lot about the music, about auditions, and of course, about reeds, but seldom do I hear oboe players talk about movement how to move better in order to make better music, perform better auditions, and scrape better reeds. But the truth is that the quality of an oboe player's movements affects every aspect of performance in profound ways. Oboe players may not seem to move as much as other musicians. We don't use our arms to make the overt movements of string players and pianists, and our feet don't need to move like organist and percussionist feet must. But oboe players constantly make fantastically intricate and coordinated movements to produce beautiful sounds. We move our fingers and arms, the muscles of our face and the tongue. We move at the hip and ankle joints in order to maintain balance and to take a bow. The movements of breathing involve moving ribs, and muscles of the abdomen and pelvic floor coordinated with the moving spine. Oboe players actually move a lot. And yet, many oboe players are told not to move or to severely limit their movements. There is a myth in the oboe world that oboe players shouldn't move a lot. It's true that some oboe players move inefficiently and use extra movements that are not necessary to make good music. Sometimes these extraneous movements actually get in the way of good music making. So a teacher might instruct this sort of student that oboe players aren't supposed to move much, and then the student begins to pare down their excess motion and discover instead those essential movements necessary for good performance. Perhaps this is the origin of this myth that oboe players shouldn't move much. But the downside of teaching that oboe players don't move is that students may begin to think that good oboe playing is a static event, which it definitely is not. When we tell oboe players they shouldn't move, then embouchures and faces may become immobile, arms are held rigidly, and the breath is constrained. Sometimes this lack of mobility will result in pain or injury. So if you haven't really thought about movement being a part of your music making, or worse yet, you have thought that oboe players shouldn't move a lot, then this is the moment to change your thinking. Oboe players, like all musicians, are movers. There are many external and internal movements that create a good performance. These must be identified and made a part of conscious awareness so that playing improves. I wrote a book called Oboe Motions that explains the various ways oboe players need to move. I could have written the title of this book as two words, but instead I linked the two words together and created a new word, oboe motions. I did this because hidden in this new word is the all-important word, emotion. Emotion is sometimes described as moving the feelings. Good oboe playing must access both kinds of movements, emotional and physical movements. They are inseparable. The word oboe motions forever links players' emotions to their physical motions. Mm -hmm.